Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to this week's episode of It's No Secret with Dr. T. With me today is somebody who makes money from blogging, and I've never met anyone before who makes money from blogging, so this is really, really cool. His name is Lee Huffman. He is a former financial planner, but now he writes about early retirement, credit cards, travel and insurance, and he enjoys showing people how to travel more, spend less, and live better. So Lee, welcome to It's No with Dr. T. This is gonna be a lot of fun, and I know I'm gonna learn heaps straight away. How you doing? Hey, it's great to be here, and uh, just having a great old time. This is great. So. Okay, so you were a financial planner. Well, I, I worked in finance for a bank. I basically was like essentially a divisional CFO for a mid-sized bank based in LA. And I said, you know what? It was time to leave the job. And rather than uh, try to find another corporate job, I said, you know what? It's time to spend more time with the family. Uh, and what we had to do, we had to leave the high cost living of California, found a lower cost place to live over in Nashville, Tennessee. And now I kind of pursuing the dream of writing full on online full time, doing my own podcast and spending a lot to- more time with the children. Yeah. And your podcast is called We Travel There. Correct. And if listeners want to listen, there's actually an episode from Cairns, Australia, featuring Dr. T. Yes. Yeah, that was fun. That was, that was really enjoyable doing that show. And that's how we sort of connected over nine months ago. And it took us nine months to eventually get me sorted <laughs> out. To uh, well, talk, talk like about my home, talk about not my hometown, but where I've been living now for the last twenty-seven years. Yeah, we we we, we birthed the podcast together. It took nine months, and uh, we made it happen. I know, yeah, and it was a it was it was a comfortable nine months, and it wasn't painful at the end, which is fantastic. Yeah, I had no morning sickness at all the, the entire time. <laughs> so with the with the blogging, were you blogging yes. before you gave up the corporate world? Had you already started doing it a little bit, or did you just bang cut the strings and get straight into it? Oh, no, no. Yeah, no, I, I've been pra- I've been working on it for in December. It'll be almost seven years. And uh, it was one of those things that is more like a hobby, just something, you know, all day, every day when I worked in corporate finance, it was either Excel or PowerPoint was really like the programs I worked in. And so I needed something that was a little bit more of a creative outlet. And I love traveling. I love kind of beating the system. Uh, I love the aspects of using miles and points to save huge amounts of money whenever we travel. And because I was making good money at the bank, everybody just assumed when I traveled all the time that I was doing it with a, with my normal paycheck. I was paying yeah. for it with cash. And I said, look, if you know me at all, you know I'm not spending money like that. I'm very <laughs> frugal. <laughs> I'm very frugal. I take that money and I, I paying down debt and saving for the future, things like that. And so, but the only reason why I was able to travel as much was using all the airline miles and hotel points. And so creating the website was the way that I was able to kind of document and show people, look, here's screenshots of the actual trips that I'm taking and booking and how you can do it as well. You've got like the ultimate job. You're like, you're writing, like if people like to write and I enjoy writing and also like traveling, but I don't get the chance to put the two together and actually make a living from it. So I think it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I will be, I will be honest, even though I've been doing it for all these years, uh, for many, many years, I wasn't really making very much money. Uh, a lot of websites just don't get that same traction, you know. And again, I was doing it as like a side hobby. So uh, my my primary job came first. My family, you know, came either first before the job or yeah. f- closely thereafter, you know. <laughs> and then uh, then like the the blog was something that I just did whenever I had some spare time. And I mean, honestly, there were times at the beginning where it might be two, three weeks, or sometimes even a month without even writing a single article. And so, but over the, over time, I got, I got more consistent, got a little bit more serious about it. And it was really like, almost like an unpaid inter- internship was building my skills, learning how to craft stories, learning about the miles and points uh, structures. So that way I can, I can educate my, my readers. And, uh, and then al- also over the years, I was making friends by going into conferences, uh, kind of just building those friendships, learning from them, the people that do that uh, full time. And then when it was time to leave my job, I said, you know what, instead of having to do another nine to five job, uh, going to another corporate job where I may or may not be happy, uh, I can choose to pursue this other path where I know I'm going to be happy. But I like what you said that initially you weren't making any money from it. You were doing it because you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And over a number of years, eventually it started showing some form of return. Because I think sometimes people will have an idea whether it's writing and travel or whatever it is they want to do. They might be shooting videos where they're on trips. And they think there's going to be this instant fame and fortune because they set up a YouTube channel. 
they take a few videos of where they're traveling and it just doesn't work that way. Not always. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, they, trust me, there are some people that where they blow up quickly, right? But uh, people like me, uh, it's like it's like an overnight success 10 years in the making. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that people think all of a sudden like you, oh, wow, you, you've done so well. It's like, well, you didn't see all the work I put into things all these other years, staying up late, working crazy hours. I mean, even now, sometimes I work crazy hours. I was up last night until 3 a.m. working on a client assignment. And then I woke up at six so that way I can make sure I can take my kids to school. What's a client so, assignment? Well, I, I write for my own website, but I also write for other people's websites. Oh, okay. And so, yeah. And so there, I make some money from my, my site, but I also write for other re people's websites talking about personal finance, credit cards. Well, that's travel. what I was going to ask you because yeah. in the bio, when I read it out, you talk about, you know, you write about early retirement, credit cards, travel, and insurance. So mm -hmm. you actually are writing for other people's websites on a regular basis. Correct, correct. Okay, and how did you get those gigs? Just sending out things to people saying, oh, I'm qualified in this area and this is what I write about. Would you like blogs written? Just if somebody was listening to this and thinking, sure. I wanna be, a, I wanna be, I wanna make money from blogging. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, it's one of those things where there's a couple of different avenues you can take, right? You can reach out to different websites and say, look, I'd like to write for you. I like your content. Here's like maybe a hole in your content that's not filled. I'd like to write an article to help you fill that hole. Uh, and so that way you're making those pitches and it's like kind of like a cold call. Like if you're in sales, right? Uh, you're making a call that they don't know who you are. They may or may not answer. They may, you know, whether it's an email or a phone call or the avenue that I took was, as I was, even though I was working my corporate job, I was attending these conferences, making the friendships, things like that. And then whenever it came time for me to decide that was the path I was going to pursue, I reached out to them and said, hey, you know me, you know, I write good content on my own site. You know that I, I know what I'm talking about. I don't feel ashamed to refer me to somebody that, that maybe you're working with. So that way I can, I can try working uh, with them as well. And that's really kind of how, what the genesis of it was. Because I think everybody's received an email at one stage or another from somebody offering to write something for their website. Oh, I would do these articles. Would you like me to write something for you? But there mm -hmm. are, there's no face to the name. The email address is a Gmail account. It's, yeah. it's so impersonal. So yeah. if people are wanting to do it, they've got to take a more professional approach to it. Yeah, it's like the there's a saying uh, where it's like you're planting the seeds before you need to reap the before you need to reap the harvest, and so you're planting these seeds. I was planting these seeds for the last several years of building these friendships, learning from them, going to these conferences, and and learning from the speakers, and then that way I said, okay, well I've learned enough. I, I think I'm qualified enough, and now it's time for me to to see whether or not I can actually make a go of it. So when you, when you were first starting. Did you just do the cold, yeah, like initially, did you do cold emails out to people and ask? Or it all started from like those relationships you built earlier? It was all the relationships, you know. Uh, I would, like for my own site, I would actually, there are sometimes I would do cold pitches to certain brands and saying, hey, I'd like to write about your product. Uh, do you have some some free product? That way I can give it to my to my readers and I can use it one of your product to, uh, to actually go through and, and try it out myself and be able to write a, a solid review on it. Uh, that was more like the cold emails that I would send out. Yeah. How did you go with um, those? What, what sort of response did you get from people wanting to review a product? Uh, you know, some of them were like, hey, you know, <laughs> go away. We don't know who you are and uh, you don't have enough traffic uh, yeah. to warrant us. Basically, they have a marketing budget, essentially. Instead of instead of uh, creating a commercial that's going to be on TV or on the radio or, or wherever, uh, their marketing budget is essentially reaching out to influencers saying, here, try our product, write a review on it, honestly. Uh, hopefully that they're going to say, be honest with it. You know, yeah. some, some brands aren't that way. Uh, write an honest review of it and then, you know, let us know. And then that way it's, it's something that we can uh, promote to our audience and say, look, so this person who's an expert traveler likes our suitcase, likes our packing cubes, like whatever the other product that they're talking about, they'll, um, that way they can use that in their marketing efforts. Okay. And that fits in really well with your website. We travel there. So any, mm -hmm. anyone that's a travel business that has a travel product, knowing that you have the We Travel There podcast and you've got the website, yeah. then you are quite a valuable person to have reviewing a product that they want to get out get out to people. Yeah, I mean, I, it, I'm not as valuable as a lot of others. I mean, I, I'm still kind of a small fish compared to a lot of other people. But uh, yeah, it's 
I've been growing my brand for years and there's a lot of people that start sites and, but there's a huge attrition rate in the first year where it's, I mean, you know, I mean, you've been working on your podcast for a while now as well, that the first few episodes, the first few articles, it's easy to crank those out. Yeah. You know, you're excited. You got all the, you got all the, the energy and everything and boom, boom, boom. You, you got it done. You're like, wow, this was easy. Now try doing that year after year after year, every day on that or every week or whatever the cycle that you're doing it, it wears on you after a while. And if you don't really love it, uh, you know, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna turn into like not a good thing. Yeah. Well, so. it's like this episode is 176, I think off the top of my head. And nice. It is like it's been almost two years that it's no secret Dr. T has been running and there have been times when you're putting in all the work, you're putting in the effort, the hours are going to doing organizing interviews, doing editing, marketing the, the podcast that you sit there going, oh, why do I do this? <laughs> but then well, exactly. every time I have a guest, every time I talk to somebody, I always get inspired by, yeah. by what they tell me. Oh, absolutely. You know, and it's one of those things that, I mean, for anybody that's listening here, it's no secret that podcasting is not like a huge moneymaker, right? Uh, most no. likely, both of us are paying out of pocket uh, to actually pro produce this content for everybody. You know, uh, this is not that marketing genre yet, like, you know, like radio and, and TV and movies where people are just throwing money at you for to be able to for you to be able to produce that content. I oh, haven't seen and all so, the people standing behind me just flicking cash my way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're making they're making it rain on Dr. T right now. Uh, you know? But it, but it's funny because a lot of people ask me about podcasting and the first question they always ask is how do you make money from podcasting? And and I think it's one of those things as well if you're very broad like this podcast is this is a very broad podcast. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm in a genre where there's a lot of people talking about small business, marketing, sure. not so much travel tips. And so when they're tossing up between listening to this show and listening to the other 5,000 shows that are out there, it's, yeah. it's quite hard to get, get traction. Whereas my other podcast, the uh, Podiatry Legends podcast, that one got traction very quickly because it's such sure. a niche sort of podcast. So, and I think that's what you're doing with your travel writing as well. And we travel there combining with your podcast it's are there many travel podcasts or people writing about travel i suppose it would yeah, be there's i mean like on the travel on the travel writing side on the blogs there are i mean there are so many people out there writing uh, a lot of them may not necessarily be qualified you know i i have a, a little bit more of a niche on the travel side because uh, i have two different sites right there's baldthoughts.com which is all about airline miles hotel points trying to travel for fr as free as possible. Like in a couple of weeks, I'm taking my daughter to Belgium. Uh, we're spending basically a week there in Belgium. We're staying for free at a hotel. We're flying business class flights basically for free. And that whole entire trip would probably cost six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000. And so that's the power of miles and points being able to do that. And so that's like the content I write there. And then where Dr. T and I uh, met is we travel there.com. And that's my podcast where it's interviews with locals about the the hidden gems of their cities all around the world, whether it's a small city, a big city. And it's, it's really cool for people. Well, one is cool for me because I get to meet all these great people and, yeah. and learn about all these cities and add them to my bucket list. But it's, uh, it's actually kind of twofold where it's, if people are, are wanting to travel to that city already, it's a great guide from a personal, from a personal look, uh, point of view from a local where they go, okay, well, let's, when you come to my town, try out this restaurant because this one has the best X, Y, Z food, you know, and make sure if you're going to go to this attraction, here's a way to skip the line. Here's a way to save money on the admission. And so that's really cool there. Um, but on the other side, it's also a, a voyeuristic look where people, maybe they don't, they, maybe they didn't really think about that city in, in the past, but they hear the podcast, they hear about all the cool things to do there. Like, wow. I never thought about going to that city, but now I really want to go. Yeah, and so that's the that's the other cool aspect of it. Yeah, it was like even asked uh, after I was on your show and we were talking about Cairns, mm -hmm. and I told you all the cool things that you can do in Cairns. And then that morning, yeah. I went out to the local radio station, so I pop out there every now and then do a segment on there. And as I'm driving out there, I, I didn't even mention that yeah you know, we have a cruise terminal, uh -huh. right in the heart of the city where the, there was a big <laughs> P and O cruise ship just sitting there. And I've gone, why did I not tell Lee about the cruise terminal? 
that's right that's in true. the heart that you can walk off the boat and in five minutes you could be you're in the center of the city and uh at the if you want to go to the casino you basically could yeah. so yeah, yeah yeah it's amazing how many hidden gems are, are in places that you don't know about so you took so on bold thoughts you help people and you teach people how to use points and yes. miles to get free trips yeah and so basically the way i look at it is uh, it's kind of like a a self-perpetuating cycle that's a, in a positive way is that if you take care of your credit uh you're going to be able to get approved for the best credit cards you get approved for the best credit cards now you're getting all the miles and points that you can use to pay for your vacations and the money that you would be otherwise spending on your vacations, you can now turn that money and use it to either pay down your debt to improve your credit score the, even more, or you can invest in your future by maybe setting aside money for your kids for college, uh, saving for your retirement. Maybe you, you're a little bit behind on that, or maybe you can accelerate your ability to retire early and uh, you know, by, by saving all that money. And then by doing all that, now you've improved your credit score even more, and that way you can get approved later on for the, the next round of cards that are the ones that are going to save you even more money uh, the following year. Okay. And on board thoughts, you have a free email course that people can do. Yeah. And so it, it basically what, what that does is it kind of guides three people through the process of, uh, of using miles and points to be able to book a vacation, to be able to save some money on it. Cause a lot of people, they look at it and they go, it's just, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't know it. Uh, it's a big, scary thing to me. Or I, I hear all these bad stories of you can't use your miles and points. And so what this does is that over the course of seven days, it walks people through the process of picking a destination, figuring out which airline miles and hotel points you really need based on which airlines fly there and which hotels are there. And then based on that, how to be able to earn those miles and points. That way you can maybe, maybe you're not gonna be able to pay hundred percent of it with the miles and points, yeah. but if you can get like, say I have a family of four, maybe I can get my wife and my kids tickets for free and I got to pay for one ticket, you know? Or maybe I can just get the hotel for free. Uh, like, for example, in June, we all went to St. Kitts. Uh, it's an island in the Caribbean. And if I had to pay cash, there's absolutely no way that I would have flown there. We didn't fly business class, anything extravagant like that. But the plane tickets from Nashville to St. Kitts would have been $916 per person. All right. Okay. Instead, I used 30,000 American Airlines miles round trip and about $55 in taxes. So instead of paying almost $4,000, I paid 120,000 American airline miles and 250 bucks. So I was going to ask you about your thoughts on always just sticking with one airline as much as you can so that you collect more points with them. And through collecting points with them, you also get yeah upgrades, better travel, mm -hmm. you get better deals. So like with me, for example, I try and fly with Qantas or an affiliate mm -hmm. of Qantas as much as I sure. can because it all accumulates to certain points and then they have like their um, normal membership, then they have silver, then they have gold. The more travel yeah, you yeah. do, you get extra baggage that you can take with you. So yeah. would you recommend no, that? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I would say on the airline side, they're not rewarding loyalty as much as they used to. And so unfortunately, if you, if you dedicate 100% of your spend to one airline, you're probably, even if you get like a mid-level status, most likely there are so many other people that are elevated above you that you're not going to probably get a lot of those upgrades. Maybe on, on a few times here and there you will, but on the popular routes, there's going to be a lot of other people that are, are, are that are like the road warriors that fly every yeah. week for work. And you're, you're just not going to, you're not going to be able to compete with them, you know, but, uh, but it is good as far as earning miles and points to focus in, in one, one airline and one hotel to be able to just, get as many miles and points as you can within those programs because you're not doing yourself any favors. If you have a thousand here, 500 there, 2000 here in all these different programs and they never add up to be enough for one free flight. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, and that's why I said, that's why like usually I've never been upgraded on a flight in my life. Mm -hmm. Never once have I got on a plane with Qantas or Jetstar, um, just in case anyone from Qantas or Jetstar is listening that I've ever been upgraded, <laughs> but I have collected a lot of points and then combining those points also with points I've collected through credit cards. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we've managed to get a, a lot of free flights at different sure. times, which has been fantastic. <laughs> that's, a, no, that's, exactly what, that's exactly what we talk about is being able to accumulate your miles and points and save your cash, keep your money in your pocket. And that way, again, you can either uh, afford to go on vacation more frequently, 
you can, when you're on vacation, you know, like if you're frugal like me, you're like, ah, oh, well, I, I really want to go to this like nice steakhouse that's here. That's like a once in a lifetime experience. But I'm like, oh, I just paid a lot of money for this vacation. And, and then you don't end up having that experience and yeah. you, you kind of kick yourself later on going, oh, why didn't I do that? Yeah, it would have been a lot of money at that moment, but I didn't do it. And so by, by taking the cost out of, of the flight, by taking the cost out of the hotel, now you can say, you know what? I didn't pay really anything to go here. It's okay to be able for, to be a splurge for these once in a lifetime experiences. Uh, like my wife and I went to Sydney a few years ago and there's the Sydney Harbor bridge that yeah. you can actually climb up on the, on the bridge. Yeah, you and can. it's an amazing tour. And the, the, the sights from up there, the perspective from up there is incredible. Once a lifetime experience. If I didn't go on that, I would have been kicking myself. Oh, we flew all the way from LA to, to Sydney and I didn't do that one thing that's really iconic. And yeah. because we use miles and points for the flight, yeah, you know, the frugal part of me kind of kicks in and says, ah, <laughs> oh, don't spend the money, you know? But the realistic person in me says, you know what? We didn't spend a lot to get here. The hotels are free. Let's just go ahead and uh, spend a little bit and, uh, and do this experience that we're going to be able to have that memory for, with us forever. So even if a trip was going to say cost you 6000 even by using points and mileage, and even if you bring it down to four thousand, you've then got two thousand mm -hmm. that you can put into experiences when you're actually at your destination. Absolutely, that is yeah, it, and it's one of those things. I think people need to be reminded about it all the time. That yeah, they need, especially if they do like to travel. Yeah, you know, if if it's every year or every two years, is focus on that next trip and what you can do to actually. Um, make it cheaper so your sure. free course cool. i will put a link in the show notes so people okay. can actually go to that and uh start doing it, it doesn't cost them anything well, thank you so much yeah and i just want to make one final point is what you said there is a lot of people find like almost like a failure where they didn't they weren't able to eliminate the entire cost of the vacation it's still a win if you can knock off a big chunk of the cost yeah so this is all through bold thoughts where, where you're teaching people that sort of thing when you're talking when you're writing about early retirement and credit cards is that also on bold thoughts as well uh no i that's usually for I mean, credit cards i mean are one of the major ways here in the u.s to yeah. earn miles and points so it, i talk a lot about that on my site as well uh but personal finance uh real estate uh, also some miles and points and, and credit cards I, I write that for other websites like uh, the points .com. he's a really popular website out there i write a lot for their family section Cause that's what I, I like to do is take my kids on vacation. And, and whenever I can, I try to get my wife away from her, from her work. So that way she can go with us. Uh, and then uh, there's other sites like choose FI, which is all about financial independence. And so accelerating your, your path to retirement. Uh, Super money is another personal finance website that I write for uh, finance buzz. So there's a lot of sites out there that I write for, and it's a way it's good for me to be able to, to get like a kind of a diversity of topics out there. Uh, and it keeps me keeps me interested in, in, the, in the whole thing. Yeah, so one question I was going to ask, do you ever look at a destination or a hotel and do you ever write to them beforehand and say, I have a podcast called We Travel There. I also write blogs about you know, early retirement credit cards, travel insurance, saving money using miles. Do you ever reach out to these people and say, will you give me a free room and I'll write a review or you don't do that? Well, I, I generally don't uh, ask for hotels just because I have the miles and the points. Yeah. So I, I don't really care about that so much. I mean, yeah, it'd be nice to get a free hotel. And, and some people have reached out to me and just offered that, uh, you know, and so I, I've taken those up on, on occasion. Um, but what I generally will do is I, I try to work with the Convention of Visitors Bureaus and say, look, I'm coming into town. I'd like to write about your towns. Uh, I'd like to meet somebody from your town. That way I can have them on my podcast. Yeah. But if you can, if we can work together, maybe get a free pass to be able to a, a experience a lot of the attractions in town, uh, and then I'll write a review. Uh, it'd be something to help promote your city, and then you can link to that and show you know other people who are interested in the city. And then if we can, hopefully we can find somebody that would like to be a guest and represent your city uh, to talk about all the fun things to do. I, I generally try not to get somebody from the visitors bureau. Uh, on my podcast just because they have to be objective yeah they can't they can't have strong opinions one way or the other like you know when we were talking right like there's definitely strong opinions about certain places that you like and there's some strong opinions where you don't like uh yeah, true. maybe their food or like uh maybe there's 
a certain area of town that you, you shouldn't stay in or whatever. I mean, that's a, the nitty gritty stuff that I really want. I don't want it sugar coated because it's not going to be valuable for the, the listeners if they don't know, like, you know what? Don't stay in that neighborhood or yeah. don't go to that place <laughs> for, for their burger, even though like, you know, it's like advertised everywhere. The reason why they're advertising everywhere is because it sucks and nobody likes to eat there. And, and there's they're trying to get people to come. Because you were uh, asking me about uh, good pizzas. Yeah. That was one of the That's questions that you I asked. Like you, you said, <laughs> when I travel, I like to have a good pizza. So I, I recommended a couple of places. People need to listen to that particular episode to find out which pizza places I recommended. So Absolutely. There's a number of good yep. pizza places in Cairns anyway. So, yeah, because when, when you're talking about the travel, so sometimes do you ever just you go on a trip, you stay in a nice motel, you come, you know, maybe you haven't contacted them. Do you come back and then do you write about those experiences just in a blog promoting a motel if there's been, yeah, you know, they haven't given you anything in return just because you want to? Yeah, no, I, I do that a lot. Uh, I write a lot about there's a brand called Kimpton. They don't have them there in in Australia, but uh, they're they used to be a primarily a U.S. based brand, very like boutiquey. Every every location is is different. It's not like the the cookie cutter yeah. uh, type of hotels that are out there, you know. And each one of them kind of has their own personality. And I just fell in love with that brand several years ago. So whenever I stay, uh, one they they know, and I think a lot of brands nowadays they know uh, which of their guests, uh, what they do for a living. And so they see me on social media and things like that. So there are times where they they take care of me, even without me really asking. And also because I spend so much money with them, uh, then they also take care of me anyways, because I have elevated status with them. And so, uh, but yeah, I love to write about it just because I want people to see what t- type of experiences are, are possible. And again, it's all about trying to either one, educate people to say, okay, if you go to this hotel, here's some of the things that you're going to be able to experience or go to the city, this is what you're going to be able to experience. And uh, sometimes it's also, look, uh, here's what's possible. I want to inspire you to be able to travel. And like one of my cousins, he goes to Maui every year. He goes, he goes to some other places, but I would probably, well, I don't have hair, so I can't pull it out. But if I had hair, I would pull it out if I had to go to the same place <laughs> year after year after year. You know, I mean, maybe it's like, it's different if it's like, you know, a weekend that you can just drive to from your house, right? Yeah. Uh, but if you're flying from the U S to Arizona to the Hawaii every year. And that's like the vacation. I would go absolutely nuts. He absolutely loves it. I would go crazy if I had to go to the same place every year. And uh, if you have limited vacation work in the corporate world, spending so much of your vacation, going to the same spot because the world is so huge and so amazing. And especially through my podcast, I'm learning even more about all these other cities and going, wow, even the cities that I, I had imagined now I want to go to all these other ones. And so like, the ones that I originally had on my top 10 list, they're getting pushed down because I'm learning about all these other cool ones that I really want to go to. Like uh, I had my buddy, uh, Brandon, uh, on the on the podcast a few, uh, a few months ago. He told me about these three cities in Poland that are absolutely amazing yeah. and super cheap and frugal. Um, but like one of the cities, I don't remember if it was Gdansk or Krakow. I think it was Gdansk. They have little gnome statues throughout, spread throughout the city. And so I want to be able to take my kids and go searching around, running around the city, finding all these little gnome statues that uh, each one of them has their own little personality. And actually, each one of them is named as well. So, oh, right, okay. so they're just hidden around the city in different spots. Yeah. And so when I heard about that, I'm like, I have to take my kids to go do that because you got a limited window with your kids, right? Yeah. Uh, you take them there when they're 16. They're like, yeah, dad, this is boring. Uh, <laughs> Let's go find some, let's go find the roller coaster or whatever the kids want to do when they're 16, you know, but when my kids right now, they're four and eight, they would go gaga overseeing all these, all these gnome statues all over the town. And so that's like those type of things to me is creating those memories, creating those special, uh, the special experiences. That's what it's all about. But I love the way that obviously you enjoy travel, you enjoy writing and like how you just, you've combined it all together. And, and at the same time, you're spending time with your family, mm-hmm. which, which I think is brilliant. And I think a lot of people listening to this can actually learn a lot from that. You know, what do you love doing? And mm-hmm. can you even write about it? You know, if there's a particular, sure. if you have an expertise in a certain area or an interest in a certain area over and above what the average person has, then, and you like to write, maybe it's time to start putting, I was say pen to paper, but who does that? Uh, fingers <laughs> on the keyboard and just start yeah, sure. cranking well, I mean, it out. Well, the thing is, like, there are a lot of people that don't like to write. Yeah. You know, 
it's just it's a difficult thing for them maybe they grew up and they didn't have the proper schooling and so they're 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 subconscious about their 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 grammar or their spelling that's fine like my dad was my dad was a bankruptcy attorney he had atrocious spelling he had me proofread documents all the time for him you know and but he was an excellent attorney yeah. you know and i think he would have done really well if he would have maybe had a podcast to talk about a lot of these bankruptcy content or maybe he, he started a youtube channel something like that would have been better for him versus versus writing because that just really wasn't something he really necessarily enjoyed and also i'm sure he was a little subconscious about about the spelling uh, of things so like, you don't have to start a blog you don't have to do whatever I, there's all these other ways to make money and create an influence and help people out because there are, are multiple multiple different channels that people subscribe to nowadays so because i was going to ask you that about youtube so obviously with all the travel you do you would have some amazing photos and some amazing video do you shoot travel videos while you're away with your family or when you're on holidays it is past your holiday you don't do as much video you do the video when you come back and review a place yeah um i do a little bit of video it's more like videos that end up being like on instagram or something like that uh, i don't do as much videos as I, as I should and i i need to do it's you know it's like always the to-do list of things that you want to do right yeah. but um it is something that I, that I want to get into. I've done some videos and, and a lot of the videos I, I do that are on my site now end up being the stuff that I, I shoot at home, whether I'm like reviewing a product, reviewing like a credit card. Uh, you know, I started a series recently where it's like uh, everybody knows like the primary benefits of certain credit cards. Like, oh, this one uh, is really good because it, it gets X, X number of miles when you uh, go and dine and you spend money on groceries or whatever. Yeah. And so I want to be able to kind of dig into uh, the hidden benefits of that credit card and basically make sure that people are maximizing uh, the, va the value of that card. Because a lot of the cards that we end up using in this world, they can, they can be annual fees of hundred dollars all the way up to $550. And so if you're, if you're making that type of investment in the card, you want to make sure that you are maximizing every ounce of that, of that card possible to make sure that you are getting enough value of that card to be able to, to pay it again the, the following year. So with your videos, when you do, you said you put them on Instagram and that is at Bald Thoughts or Correct. at We Travel There, or do you put it on both? Uh, most of it's at, at Bald Thoughts. That's my primary one. Uh, the, the We Travel There, I generally just try to keep that content specific to the cities that I, that I interview. Oh, okay. So. so most of your writing is all through Bald Thoughts. That's where the free course is. That's all on Bald Thoughts. The Correct. We Travel There is the podcast and the people you interview about the different cities or, or places. Do you ever go to a city yourself and then do a, a quick podcast and review your holiday on what you did in that city and what you learned if you haven't had someone from that city on? Uh, no, I haven't done that. Uh, but basically, if I if I go to a city, like uh, recently we went to a city called Asheville that's over in North Carolina. Yeah. And uh, it's a really pretty area. Uh, there's the, the Biltmore estate that's there, which is absolutely tremendous. Uh, I do want to find somebody to be on the podcast from there. Uh, the review that I would do of everything that we did in that city is going to reside on bald thoughts. Cause that's like my personal experience. Um, uh, but the, the podcast episode about it would be on, we travel there and just more for like the technical side of things. Um, I would link back and forth between those two, those two, those two articles, uh, my experience on, on bald thoughts, I would say, Hey, by the way, I've recorded an episode here, uh, and then link to the episode. And then on the episode page, I would go, Hey, by the way, I, I visited this town and check out all the fun things we did. And I would link back and forth to the, either to the videos, to the images or to the, to the reviews. So when you're, so you'll write, you'll write blogs for other people's websites, as we discussed, and then you write for your own website, bald thoughts. So how do you promote what you write? That's how do you get traffic to your site just as a, as a marketing tip? Sure. Sure. And so it, it's really, it's again, like anything else, you're building those relationships. So over the course of time, uh, following, interacting, commenting on other people's content, whether it be on Twitter or Instagram, uh, Facebook or wherever, um, just constantly interacting on other people's stuff. So that way you've made these friendships. And now when you post, uh, you post it on there and then your friends will then share it or comment on it. And then that leads to other people doing it. Uh, and then also doing some research as far as different hashtags to use. So that way, like, uh, like, for example, with Kimpton, I would do hashtag Kimpton, hashtag Kimpton hotels and then hashtag like inner circle, because that's 
the the part the the status level that I'm at there. Oh, okay. And so I would I would do certain hashtags that I know that certain followers of that brand know and are familiar with that maybe they're looking for, and so they'll find my content that way. Uh, I also use uh, like LinkedIn. That's more of a professional versus a more of a personal uh, network. And so with that, I'm also publishing my content there as well. And that way you're just kind of reaching different audiences that uh, maybe aren't part of your, uh, your personal circle or aren't necessarily random strangers, but they are, there's some people that you've interacted with more in your professional life. And now they've um, are interested in, in your content. Like for example, I'm speaking at a conference in Chicago in October. And so I, I just wrote an article talking about that and basically said, Hey, if you're interested in learning about miles and points, come to the Chicago seminars. It's October, I think, 18th through 20th. So come on out and, and join me there. And so I, I wrote that article and, and put it up on LinkedIn. So hopefully now uh, more people will sign up and go and then att attend my presentations. Okay, that's great. I've got one last question for you. So sure. somebody's listened to all this. Their uh, creative juices have started to flow a little bit. And they're going, you know what? I am, I'm going to start blogging. Yeah, on my own site, but I'm, I'm going to start reaching out to other people. And say they want to start. You say they want to write for other people. Sure. What, what's one tip you would give them just to kick them off and get them started? Okay, if they want to, if they want to start writing for other people. Yeah. Um, again, the 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 number one thing, the number one thing I think you should do is because there are a lot of websites that it will allow for guest posts. Yeah. Um, is review their site, send them an email or connect with them on, on social media, whatever the, the channel that you can get, get that, gain that traction and basically say, look, I really love your content. I'm a, I'm a follower of yours. I really like it, but here is something that, that maybe you're not writing about. And if I can write an article that would fill this hole in for you, that would fill that gap. Would you be interested in, in, in writing and in, in reading my writing? And like, here's a proposed title and here's kind of a proposed structure of the article that I would, that I would write for you. Okay. Do you put a fee structure around that or initially you should just be doing it for free just to get your foot in the door? Initially, I think you're going to do it for, you're basically going to do it for free. It's called a guest post. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so basically you're doing that and it's, it's something that you want to get your, your name out there on other people's sites. And so that way, when you go to find clients that are going to pay, you can say, look, here's some of my writing that was good enough to be on XYZ site. Uh -huh. And this person yes. who is an expert in this field, found that my information was valuable enough to share it with with their audience. And so based on that, that gives you a little bit more credibility versus saying, Hey, here's a couple of articles that I'm, that I've written, but nobody, nobody's ever read. Yeah. And yeah, here's, here's 10 articles on my website, which I think are awesome. And four yeah. people have looked at them. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's one of the things with, uh, whether, if you start your own website, YouTube channel, whatever, if you're not doing enough to promote it, you can, it's like you, if you're like the best chef in the world and you can make the best chocolate cake or the best rack of ribs or whatever, but if nobody knows about your food, your restaurant's going to fail. Yeah. You know, so like we talked about it and there's an article on your site called the 80, 20 rule. Yeah. Right. You really should be spending 20% of your time creating content, 80% of your time promoting it. Did you read my article? I skimmed it. I'll, I'll, I'll admit. <laughs> I'll admit. Uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm familiar with the Pareto principle, you yeah. know? Uh, so I, I will admit that I, I skimmed over it, but, uh, but that's the thing is that you, you need to focus your time where you're going to get the best results. And so again, 20% of your time like writing it and then, and then basically 80% of your time broadcasting it to the world, finding like, it's one of those things where, if you're not spending enough time, it could be like you're right there, right on the edge of being able to just really blow up. And that's when you give up, you know, yeah. and uh, you see some of those stories. Um, and it, it's uh, just a shame because another person had the exact same story and they just tried two or three days more than what you did. And that was like the thing that broke through. You know, I, I saw this one, this one cartoon once and this guy was like digging, 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 digging for, for gold. And, he stopped and there was maybe like a foot worth of, of dirt left between him and like the big mother load. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen that same cartoon. It's like, it's only, it's like an inch. It's like yeah. he's seen there with a pick and then the cartoon underneath is him with the pick over his shoulder depressed and he's just walking away and yeah, it was yeah. like another inch. And all of yep. a sudden all the riches were just behind, were just there, but he, he gave up. So it's like creating, it's even like creating, it's just creating that habit of writing 
and mm-hmm. and creating the content and just keep doing it. And once you yeah. form that habit, then you will just keep doing it. And eventually exactly. success will come down the path. Exactly. Exactly. And it's uh, whether you're writing your own website or you're, again, you're contacting other people to write on theirs. You just set a goal for yourself and be consistent. Say, you know what? I'm going to write to five different people uh, this every week until I get enough content out there where I can start getting uh, getting paid for this instead of just doing it for free. Think of like, don't think of it as like working for free. Think of it as being an intern yeah. uh, for somebody. You know, like again, my for a long time, my my website didn't really make much money. Even now, it's like I'm not I'm not you know rolling in the dough necessarily on my site. You've got but, a person standing behind you throwing cash in the air as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, one of my buddies, Brett. Uh, he's a perfect example of this, right? Uh, somebody, he graduated from college. Uh, you know, I met him through a friend. He saw that uh, what I was doing on my site, he really like, was enamored with it. And he's like, look, I want to I want to work with you. I'm willing to learn. And you don't have to pay me anything. Just kind of teach me everything you, you know about writing. And so we did that for a while. And then I got to the point where I, I, I would insert uh, affiliate links into his articles and and we had put special tags in there. So if anybody came through his tag, I made sure that I, I kind of shared some of the revenue with him. So that way he's getting something uh, for, for his efforts beyond just the, the learning. And then it went from that uh, over the course of like a year and a half, he wrote you know a number of articles for me. And then now uh, he just actually just quit his corporate job and is now traveling the world. And by gain, gaining the experience in writing uh, with me, he found a job where he can work virtually from anywhere in the world writing full time. That is and awesome. so he's a perfect, perfect success story of, you know, not worrying about getting money right away, focus on getting those, those skills that are going to be able to get you paid later on. Yep. And then, then you can do it on your terms. Mm-hmm. Once, once the money comes in and depending, yep. it will trickle first, Sure. <laughs> but eventually I suppose it's anything you do. You don't become a fantastic guitar player after one lesson. Yep. Yeah, even the best singers still practice. So Absolutely. it's one of those things. It's just the repetition, the commitment of doing it, and also be doing it because you love doing it. Mm-hmm. And then I think the success will come at the end. I totally agree. So Lee, I want to thank you for being on It's No Secret with Dr. T. This has been fun. Like I said, you're my first professional blogger. I think that is awesome. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on and sharing all your knowledge and just let people know Go to wetravelthere.com and boldthoughts.com. That's where you're going to find Lee hanging about. Absolutely. And I'm on. I'm active on social media all the time. So hit me up on Twitter at Bold Thoughts and uh, love, to, uh, love, to eat, love to meet you. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed listening to Lee Huffman today, the professional blogger. And remember, go and check out his website, boldthoughts.com, and also wetravelthere.com. And if you click on the blog section, it'll take you through to the podcast where I'm talking about cans. And I just want to point out another podcast that's on here uh, was done with his guest, Kathy Forrest. Now, the reason I point this one out is because Kathy was about to travel to Cairns, and she listened to the podcast episode that I was on, And we connected with each other on Facebook. And then when she was in Cairns, we actually caught up and had breakfast together. So that is the power of podcasting. And that's the power of what Lee was talking about, building relationships. Is I've heard the saying once before, you dig the well before you need water. And Lee said, plant the seeds to get the crop later on. And I think it's really important that if you want to get into blogging or get into anything, start building the relationships early. Go to conferences, go to events connect with people because down the track it's those relationships which are going to be really really powerful so just before i go just want to remind you that if you haven't read my book it's no secret there's money in small business you can get a copy on amazon or wherever you like to buy your books from and if you're a podiatrist you may enjoy it's no secret there's money in podiatry so that's it for me this week look after yourself look after your family and i will talk to you again next week bye for now